boys, oh my boys, what we gonna do? Is an empty net of herring and an empty barrel too. And, and the, the smell, smell of the sea and the smell, the smell of the wheel. Here we go. Out the sea we go, roll out the sea we go. Deep within the bustling centre of the town of Glastonbury stands a building as ancient and revered as it is misunderstood the Glastonbury Assembly Rooms. It is a handsome place, this mecca for the arts, concealed at the bright sunlit end of an ancient tunnel adorned with obscure and arcane ideograms and runes of unknown provenance. Walking through the doors today, seeing the state-of-the-art staircase thriving restaurant and magnificent performance area, one can feel at odds with the assembly room's colourful and sometimes dark history. In the 14th century, the Benedictine order of monks, such as those at Glastonbury Abbey, were prohibited the eating of any animal possessing more than three legs. On feast days, such as Easter, the beheading of St. John the Baptist in August, Exaltation Day and the Festival of St. Dennis in October, they were allowed un-meat, such as the fetuses of rabbits. However, their diet consisted mainly of vegetables, such as turnips, and birds, and especially on Fridays, fish, and lots of it. This fine and venerable building was constructed by Abbot Adam of Sodbury in 1327, who also built a new chapel of St. Michael's Church on Glastonbury Tor. And far from being the thriving centre for artistic endeavour we enjoy today, the Glastonbury Assembly Rooms were originally the Friday dining hall for the monks of the Abbey, and the name derives from Acellus, the Latin for haddock. This eponymous haddock was perhaps wishful thinking by Abbot Adam, because although marine fare could be shipped by barge or curricle along the mighty River Brule from ports such as Highbridge on the coast, the journey took three weeks and the cargo was invariably putrid on arrival at the Abbey. So the monks had to be content with a rougher, muddier menu from the Abbey's pond, such as gudgeon, eel, and tench. The abbots and their brethren would gather here, following the liturgy of sext and before that of known, every Friday to carouse and eat the boiled fish from the stagnant and filthy pond in the abbey ground. In particularly lean times, the monks would have little option but to dine upon the scrollop, a now extinct mollusk once plentiful in the river's brew and parrot, which was described by the venerable Bede as having both the texture and flavour of a heavily diseased bogey. The assembly rooms were also the location for the truly hideous practice authorised by Pope Boniface VIII in 1301, of Ignara Runa Magna Pacuctata, or being beaten unconscious with a large fish. This was a punishment meted out with grim impunity to novice monks who had committed some minor offence, such as speaking English or breaking wind at Vespers. In 1430, an eight-year-old pauper child called Giles Bumgardner, whose family lived in penury near Magdalen Street, approached the then abbot, Nicholas of Froome, begging for employment. After some consideration, Nicholas sent Bumgardner to the Abbey of Plusgarden near Elgin in North East Scotland, where the monks there were to teach him the ancient rites accorded to their own haddock rooms, including the lingua floridior pescium, the baroque and flamboyant tongue of the grooms of the pike from antiquity. On his return, as a strapping young man ten years later, Giles Bumgardner 
was given the ceremonial title of Glastonbury, the Groom of the Pike, in recognition of the great knowledge gleaned amongst the Benedictine monks of Scotland, such as the correct method of fish preparation and learning the shadowy ceremony of piping in the tarp, which is still observed every second Friday of every month, although nowadays the carp is represented by a fish finger. The bum gardeners are still very much part of Glastonbury life, and from 1430 their fortunes improved considerably. The eldest son of each generation since Giles first came dewy-eyed before Abbot Nicholas has been sent to Scotland at the age of eight from the family seat at Bumgardner Field to study the same labyrinthine secrets as his ancestor. Some of the more illustrious Bumgardners are Barrington Battery Bumgardner, the originator and inventor of batter who held the post between 1473 and 1500. And Septimus Bumgardner, who was plagued by terrible and prophetic dreams in the 1870s and 80s. And Rocky Bumgardner, father of today's groom of the pike, who lost his right arm battling a tench in 1904. Today's groom of the pike in Glastonbury is Craig Bumgardner, and as he took an intermission from his many ceremonial duties, I was permitted a brief audience with him for this presentation. Mr Bumgardner, uh, thank you very much for your time, and I cannot but compliment you on your magnificent headgear. Is this part of your ceremonial uniform? I came to Birthwood in a time for sweet misery for all and may strip the rest of it. As the gentry are round the mountain and I heard the poor folks of a foul waking nightmares as they toiled, talking gossip cease because all subjects had become vile. Well, that is fascinating, Mr Bumgardner. And what historic meal was prepared by Giles on that far-off day now lost to all but your family in the mists of antiquity? See, we had humbly bid that those that come to here to not to gather to roam the needles and leaves the floor in the forest that are where they lay. Every place is tough it, short of heaping it, bury it in the own door, bury the months I've picked it up and spit it through the invariably catches. I grew as many in these environs, serving those with plenty and air but all as much piss poor handouts are named. And what ceremonial apparatus do you wield whilst preparing the fish dishes in which you are so remarkably skilled? I well like see, we were to come our faces into the mud, if such a pleasure for joy to be beheld like. Some folk plucked at their in reverence, their shrieking and their humming gee and way, after a couple of months of pain and careful preservations, to the sound of strange and sticky bouts of marbles. Uh, Mr Bumgardner, I must say that may come as a surprise to some of our audience. <laughs> I have asked child pillar, rose for the harsh crack and was lost in the high darkness. The effect was, like I imagine, walking with an apostle and head might be. So, once more called upon to perform his antique obligations, we leave Craig Bumgardner in his hallowed shrine and say adieu to the Glastonbury Assembly Room. The North Somerset Municipal Parish Council, Church of England and Mayoral Authority have invested heavily in bringing world-renowned artists to the assembly rooms, making this place a magnet for lovers of the arts and entertainment across the globe. Recent attractions have included Vesta Tadley and the Fairy Bells, renowned for their stirring rendition of You've got to look after your tuppence or that man will have his disgusting way. The great Zazel, who was fired into the audience from a cannon during a Christmas extravaganza in 1922, causing a fire and several unfortunate fatalities. And George Woodley and his separating leg. The forthcoming and much anticipated amusement, sponsored by the North Somerset Municipal Parish Council Church of England Mayoral Authority, which we were allowed to film in rehearsal, will be 
a gala evening with Tarquin Pickett. <laughs>